happens. You know, and this is one of the things right from the structure of magic. One of the big pushes in NLP is this is epistemological question, how do you know? What, what are your evidences? What are you going to use as evidences for a statement, a belief, an assumption that you're making? And is it kind of robust and coherent? Is it shareable with other human beings? You know, does it have some kind of, you know, semi-objective kind of reality? So this idea, how do you know? How do you know? It's very hard for us to just get out of our maps, and yet we do. So it can't be that hard. It seems to be a natural thing, and it seems like we impede that natural mechanism in some way. We get fixed and stuck and committed to certain kinds of ways, rules about the world and how everything should be. That is going to kind of fit, and I say should advisedly, because that is the belief structure. Then we've sort of got another presupposition, which basically goes, people can learn, you know, people learn, they adapt, they're adaptive, they communicate, they influence all the time. People have resources, they're driven, so there's kind of innerness as well to this issue of influence and communication, resourcefulness and learning, that in NLP we see people like that, and I think that's one of the keys as well to our work is like, well, I'm not trying to give people advice or tell them what to do or whatever. I'm trying to see how can I use my words and my behavior to somehow just kind of like find a way that they can perceive now some new reality in which they do have better choices, in which those choices become visible to them in a kind of natural way, the map updates, and we can do that through our words, and obviously I'll take you through some of the some of the things. So got this idea, map territory, people, you know, this is like positive intention, we're always influencing and communicating, we're always capable to learn, and people have resources. That's how we're working with people. So we're also working with people towards certain kinds of goals. So in your coaching, it's like, well, how do you know that you're done? <laughs> how do you know the coaching is successful? Again, this issue of what are the evidences that we're looking for? Our basic model is this model in NLP, isn't it? There's a present state, a present problem type state. There's a kind of desired state. There's a goal, an outcome, a direction, whatever you want to call it. And that uh, somehow on the, so there's a gap between where you are now and where you'd like to be. And somehow there's a journey between those two places. And the journey between those two places has basically, in this very simplified model, two <laughs> kinds of things going on. It has, on the one hand, there are interferences. There are difficulties in your map. There are difficulties in the world. There are, uh, you know, misunderstandings. There are funny feelings and anchors. There are, you know, lack of time and money and the way of thinking that will kind of resolve this in some way. So there are interferences. There are kind of problems to solve. I think the other thing is obviously there's also resources. There's also resources within the person and in the bigger world and in the bigger kind of community. So here's our basic model. And it's captured in lots and lots of ways. Uh, let me just say, so the, so the overall frames are, we're changing something from a problem frame to an outcome frame. We're changing something from a failure frame to a feedback frame. So where someone's stuck and they're having a whole load of thoughts about, or you know, they're stuck where something hasn't worked, into a place where they are active again and can elicit new kind and make sense of appropriately new kinds of feedback into their behavior and the, the way you know the way they're progressing in along this kind of pathway and they're changing from a can't or hi there hi there nice hi. to see you uh, a can't or impossibility type frame to more this as if or choice type frame the as if frame, remember, is this one where you are kind of imaginatively able to step, as it were, beyond your problem 
and actually try on imaginatively what it might be like if you, you know, if you were where you wanted to be instead of where you are. We're able to do that as human beings through the power of our own imaginations. Very few other um, mammals and animals are able to do it. We can do it in a limited kind of way, but not nearly to the extraordinary degree that we have this uh, uh, amazing thing. So we've got several models, which I don't know whether most of you know most of these models. Um, it looks like a whole load of uh, letters. <laughs> There's the tote model. Does everybody know the tote model and use the tote model? Does anyone not know? It's the model, it's the guided missile system model, basically. It's about in course correction, that you have a destination. So, in other words, you have time, space, coordinates, and evidences, and you act and you do things, and you have a kind of constant comparison going on which I always say is a bit like Bart Simpson in the back of the car going, are we there yet, are we there yet, are we there yet? And you're looking to see, has this gap closed yet? Am I now, is my present state now my desired state? So in other words, have I sort of caught up with this gap between where I am and where I want to be? And you're doing that in a kind of action, behavior, obviously inner kind of programs kind of way. The score model, Takes the, takes the present state and makes it into symptoms and causes of the symptoms. So it's a kind of timeline. This really goes C, S, um, O, E, and then the R drops in. The R is the R of resources. So you have symptoms and causes here, and then you have outcomes and effects here. And of course, the effects are also positive intentions and values. That's is where your values come in. Um, and then the resources, uh, and really the score model works by um, <clears throat> setting out all the pieces well enough uh, such that it's got this kind of emergent property. The resource tends to present itself once you've organized all the pieces. There's stepping up and down, which we particularly do in PPD. I don't know whether a lot of people here are PPD, but not everybody. And it's basically you're going, here's my outcome, what will that do for you? And you get to values and big picture and the kind of deeper driving felt limbic system motivation for something. What's really kind of driving the goal? Because if you think goals are the more tangible forms of values, aren't they? I mean, there's, you want a, a value drives the goal, <clears throat> and then stepping down, you go, well, what's stopping you? So this takes you back to things like symptoms. What's stopping you? This, I mean, there's this very clever little thing. It goes, what stops you? What do you want instead of that? And you're moving, as with the metaprograms, between the towards and the away from forms. And you're gradually, usually, kind of refining and reducing this kind of distance. You're dealing with surfacing sort of interferences along the way. And then this, although it might look like UFO, <laughs> as we bring the aliens into the mothership, um, it's actually my little thing for well-formedness, well-formed outcomes. We have that idea when we stay, you know, because beliefs, you know, we're just kind of like <coughs> reaching around with our maps and models and our cognitive biases and our peculiar <laughs> take on the world. Uh, it's all fine, 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 unless we want something and it's not straightforward for us to get it. Then beliefs surface. So in other words, this stuff doesn't normally surface until there's this gap between where you are now and what you want. Even if you don't know what you want, but you know that you don't know what, you don't like what you want now, what you've now got, um, that then that's the opportunity in a way for beliefs to, to so you've got this idea of well-formedness, that you're going, well, what really is the goal? You need an address, like giving an address to the taxi driver, and go, what's here? Because we can't design a pathway till you've got a destination. You know, the pathway isn't just a pathway, it's not a procedure. It's like, it's the relationship between where you are now and where you want to go. So you need both pieces in order for a pathway and a direction to kind of spring up between them, a bit like on the sat-nav, you know. 
you can't just say to the satnav, goes, well, I'd like to go somewhere, not here. 